All right, with this next line, Evan Sadi's Palladius, we, or the Sadi family Palladius, we venture to the absolute top of South African winemaking. If you did join us for the All Height uh, just before, I think these two flow really nicely with one another, and actually our first wine, the Steen, at the beginning. Here, what we've got in comparison to the All Height, which is the winery founded in 2011 and is kind of that second generation of revolutionaries, the Saudi family was actually founded in 1999. Now, I have to mention Evan Saudi's accolades. He is the highest rewarded winemaker by the Wine Spectator and also by Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. He's been called an absolute asset to the South African wine industry. He's been called also one of the most intellectual rebel winemakers in all of the Southern Hemisphere. So here is a man who has a strong place in South Africa wine history already, even though he's a fairly young man. Now his background was actually as a surfer, and once South Africa lifted the travel bans, or had the travel bans lifted, he surfed around the world. He eventually became very interested in winemaking and traveled cycling around the world through all kinds of different wineries. Because South Africa is in the Southern Hemisphere, it actually gives you a chance to have two harvests, one in the North and one in the South. And you can actually go, if you're trotting around the world, make harvests in faraway places like New Zealand or Napa Valley, as well as coming home to make South Africa wine. So to my understanding, Eben participated in as much winemaking as he possibly could. And when he came back to South Africa, he had some fairly radical ideas. Now, these radical ideas, again, I think are the first wave of South Africa, and I think he's the pinnacle producer to think about them. One of his radical ideas was that South Africa is full of old bush vine vineyards. Old vineyards that were planted not necessarily on trellises, but just to be bushes. So they still make grapes, but many of them are over 100 years old, so century-old bush vineyards. Also, South Africa has a huge diversity of grape varieties going on in it. Now, of course, many of them are centered on two, uh, Cinso and also Chenin Blanc, or many were centered on those two, but there were still massive plantings of all kinds of different grape varieties, Portuguese varieties, Portuguese red and white varieties. Sometimes you had odd French varieties like Colombard coming in. South Africa has the only remaining clonal material of red semillon in it. Uh, since so already mentioned, was planted to a huge variety. So one of his projects was to start going around the Western Cape, or excuse me, the coastal region, but the entire Western Cape, and looking for these old bush vine, old plantings of vineyards. Now, it's astonishing because he was probably the first person to do this. He was certainly the first person that I heard of, of ever doing such a thing in South Africa. I can remember reading the World of wine, Fine Wine article that said that Evan Sadi was producing a six bottle sampler set of old vine material, but only in 375 milliliters because it was such a small amount that he could make. Now, one of the things that came out of that project, or let's leave that project for a second and venture to this wine, which is Palladius. Now, if you look at the grape composition of Palladius, it's rather hard to find. And I could give it to you, but I'd have to read it to you. It is actually a blend of Chenin Blanc, Grenache Blanc, Marsan, Colombard, Palomino, Semillon, Grusson, Verdeo, Claret Blanc, and Viognier. Now, I think I, I've had employees talk to Evan, but I haven't uh, spoken to him specifically. I think when he started making this wine, the idea was that he was going to make a Cape blend and the best possible wine he could out of the grape material. And we're going to encounter that idea of Cape blend in the red wines more frequently. And that was an early idea for, I think, many South African vintners trying to achieve beyond what their history had shown for the last century. So to me, this is a really an astonishing wine that embarks on a new style of South Africa and a new project for South Africa in so many ways. The other thing, of course, is I think as a wine, it's stunningly amazing and incredibly complex. 
all of those grape varieties, he works to try to bring harmoniously into a whole to give you an example of the South Africa vintage that happened on the Western Cape that year. But I think when you taste it, and I guess I would say when you taste it and smell it and look at its price tag, don't treat it as a simple wine to just drink or pound away. Treat it as an odyssey. This is a wine that really wants to be with you for hours at a time. It's a wine that's going to develop and change as you drink it in the glass. All of those grape varieties will show themselves, but it's the complexity that's going to unfold for it. I think if you treat the wine as an odyssey, it makes the price tag make a little bit more sense. It means that the wine gives you hours and hours of pleasure, and you can amortize the price over those hours. I can't really describe the wine myself because I think there's just so much going on, both on the nose and on the palate. Again, I think it's an extraordinary achievement in South Africa wine. Now with Eben Sadi, here we have the intellectual idea of a Cape blend, making the best you can that shows the vintage. But he is also the person who hunted down all those old bush vines and started vinifying all of those wines separately. I think he was actually one of the first South African producers to do this. Now that idea of honoring South Africa's single vineyards has actually grown, and he being the pioneer of it, has grown and has become something that has, is of, uh, excuse me, of substantial importance to vintners. As of 2017, South Africa launched the Heritage, Heritage Vineyards Project and the Heritage Vineyard Project is honoring these old sites. And they also launched the Single Vineyard Project as well. Again, the idea that they are protecting these old sites. So when you see those two terms occur on South African wine labels or on the top of the bottles with tags, they are actually legally designated terms trying to honor South Africa's biodiversity, particularly in its grapes. And I think oftentimes the wines inside are incredibly astonishing. And my belief is that all starts here with Evan Sadi. Maybe one other um, award to mention for Evan Sadi and his wines to place this in your mind. I know it sounds a bit funny and the first time I heard it, I didn't quite get the joke, but there's actually a wine rating guide in South Africa called Platters. And it really is after a platter, like a plate but platters. So platters goes and gives wines awards and Eben Sadi is always at the top of them and gets his three platters, the highest of all that you can get every single year. Amazingly for, our, for us in this tasting, platters also awards South African winemaker of the year and Eben Sadi and All Height and one other one, Moyu, which we sometimes have, generally are the top three in South Africa. So if you will, the best of the best in South African white wine.